Hello TikTok, it's been a while since I went live on here. Today I'm just going to give people, I guess, what they want on TikTok, and I'm just going to talk about some stories, uh, maybe some of them concerning Colin David hyphen Wayne Colin Miller, maybe some of them concerning Colin Russell hyphen J Colin Gould. Stories concerning first-hand knowledge of using, using uh, this technology in a practical setting, in an everyday environment setting, what it can do, what it doesn't do, and uh, why you might be interested in learning it. I can definitely tell you that only the 1% of the 1% of the 1% will learn this. You have to have a reason to learn it. My reason for learning it in 2017, when I began learning it, was that I was sick and tired of the system that I was in. I was sick and tired of it. I was sick and tired of court proceedings. I was sick and tired of different things that I saw that didn't make sense. So something as, as minuscule as a seatbelt law. I was like, man, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. A seatbelt. Get pulled over, get a ticket for a seatbelt? What are you talking about? I can see being sanctioned for driving drunk under the influence of alcohol or, or some other substance, but getting pulled over because you're not wearing a seatbelt is complete and utter balderdash. So... That's one of the things that got me thinking. Anyways, among other things, among other, you know, court proceedings and things like that. That's what got me interested in it. That's why what galvanized me to learn it. And so that's what I'm going to be talking about in this live. So I'm going to wait and see if I get some other people on here. Also, feel free. Pop in the comments field, the, the chat section, whatever you want to say. Uh, I definitely ask that you keep it respectful. Um... I know TikTokers are used to just speaking their mind and saying whatever they want to. Uh, but I look at this place as my vessel. This is my vessel, my terms and conditions. And so I ask that you be respectful when you come on here. Um, whatever that means to you, I guess, is how you will take it. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. Right now I have a couple bottle fed kittens that I have to feed right now but I'm going to be right here and I'm going to be looking at comments and I'm going to be yakking away What is correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar? Correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar is a grammar technology that was brought to the public by its founder, Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, in 1988. And uh, from the story that he tells about why he brought it forth is because he went into court and a judge basically told him that... Uh, the courtroom was the judge's courtroom, and there's nothing David could do about it, and the judge was going to do whatever he wanted to do, and then David decided to try and find a remedy for that, and he did, and he created the mathematical interface on grammar. Well, created wouldn't be the correct term, I don't think. He broke, uh, to use his own words, he broke the mathematical interface on grammar and began using it. I highly recommend you TikTokers out there do a little study. Check out legal documents from the 1800s or 1700s if you can, or even early 1900s. Look at land deeds, trusts, and things like that. And look at the way they were written. It will look eerily similar to quantum grammar. Although it's not quantum grammar, it looks very similar to it. They use a lot of prepositional phrases 
in their sentences. Like it'll start off, for this day, blah, 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 of this month, blah, 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 blah. You know, it'll, it uses things like that. So when, <laughs> what we like to call Vasilis, i.e. employees of the fiction system, when they begin making fun of the way correct sentence structure is, you know, because that, that's the lowest hanging fruit you can do. If you don't understand something, you dismiss it. You make fun of it. You ridicule it because you don't know anything about it. So what's the next best thing? Just make fun of it. Put it down. Dismiss it. But when they do that, they it's like they don't they don't know their own history, that that's actually the way their documents were, were written very similar to that in the past. You cannot tell me that in the plain English fiction sector that the knowledge of grammar has increased over the years. No, it's taken a nosedive. These days, people do not know how to read and write. And... <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying anything that no one that, that anybody isn't aware of. Young people these days on TikTok, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter or X or whatever, they don't know how to spell. They don't know how to syntax. They don't know how to put together a sentence that even makes sense in fiction babble. They just don't. Like a good example I see all the time is the word loose. They'll say something like, you know, Trump is loosing his legal battles. L-O-O-S-I-N-G. Loose is the opposite of tight. Lose, L-O-S-E, is the opposite of win. But people don't know this. And, and that's the level of knowledge has dropped dramatically. People just don't know how to read and write. Much less communicate. Now that I got the kittens out of the way, I can start talking about some stuff. All right. So the first thing that I used correct sentence structure for back in late 2017, early 2018 was I challenged a state tax entity. And I, th I believe I've told this story before on these feeds, but it's one I'd like to tell because it is the very thing that galvanized me to get closure on this grammar. Now, there was a, a tax entity that claimed, let's just throw a number out there. They claimed that I owed $80 in taxes. Okay. And I also owed $200 in late fees and penalties. You got that? $80 in taxes, $200 in late fees and penalties. Now keep in mind, I'm a newbie. Back in 2017, I don't have closure on the grammar. I'm just testing things out. I didn't even know how to syntax correctly back then. <clears throat> so, what I ended up doing was I wrote a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal, vessel, court, venue, to the best of my knowledge. I put a couple ones and twos above some of the words on the tax document, meaning I tried to syntax it. I did forensics. I pointed out particles of negation. I pointed out that brackets means it's off the page, yada, 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 so on and so forth. The meat and potatoes of it was, at the end, I told them, I said, you have to show me your authorization to tell me that I have to pay you something. Number two, you have to show me your contract and correct grammar that I agreed to. <clears throat> or number three, go on vacation, i.e. vacate. And also, by the way, I told them that I appreciate the state of so-and-so, that I want to contribute to the wages of the workers that take care of the roads 
keep the gas lines together, uh, work on the water lot, water mains and whatever else they do. I want to contribute to that. You know, I don't want to leave anybody high and dry. However, these penalties and fees, this extra 200 bucks, that's not, uh, I don't remember signing up for anything like that. Me, as a newbie, this is what I did. I didn't want to bite off more than I could chew. I just wanted to see what they would do. So I sent this to them, and I sent a check for, for 80 bucks. And I said, as far as the extra 200 bucks goes, I didn't agree to that. Within two weeks, they sent me a letter back saying we were square. It settled, and I never heard from them again. So when that happened, a light bulb went off in my head. I was like, whoa, I don't even know this stuff all that well, and it works. So I doubled down and started learning more in earnest. I put about 2,000 hours in and really started sending out claims to things like collection agencies, um, parking tickets, all kinds of different stuff. Sent out terms and conditions to banks. Um, stopped getting junk mail completely because of this. I even sent tax a Jehovah's Witness pamphlet which was hilarious because I invited them. I gave them my phone number and I invited them to come to my house. You know, I'm like, are you aware that you are promoting a fictitious conveyance of grammar? So the Jehovah's Witness came to my house. There was an older gentleman and a younger gentleman. And I came out with my credentials, my C pass C treaty. And I showed it to them and I said, can I see your credentials, please? And the older gentleman said, well, I have a driving license. This, I said, is that your driving license? He said, yeah. I said, uh, no, it's not. He said, what do you mean? I said, look, it says Michigan driving license. It doesn't say John Doe driving license. It says Michigan driving license. So it's not your license. It's Michigan's driving license. And he was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. And then I said, what is a license but a paid permit to do something that would otherwise be illegal against the law? You're paying to do something illegal. <laughs> the psychology behind this stuff, it, it eludes people sometimes. So anyways, we get into a discussion and the older gentleman takes over and he begins telling me about his belief in Jehovah and, and all this stuff. And, and I said, so... In your belief system, you feel that 144,000 chosen ones are going to go to heaven, right? And then the rest are going to stay on earth. And he's like, yes. I said, well, why are you out here recruiting? Aren't you afraid that I might take your spot if you're one of the 144,000? And he just kind of laughed, you know. And then I, I did something like... Um, I said, this is an avocado. He agreed with me. He said, yeah, that's an avocado. I handed it to him. I said, you can feel it. Yep, yep, it's an avocado. Looks like an avocado. I said, would you say that this avocado is a fact? And he said, yes. I said, okay. I said, what are the criteria that credential it as a fact? He said, well, in this case, it's physical. I can see it. I can feel it, I can sense it, because seeing and feeling, smelling, tasting, those are all senses, okay? Those things credential it as a fact. And then I held out my hand and I said, show me your God, show me your Jehovah. Then I could see the wheels turning in his head. And then he said, well, we navigate on, on, we operate on what we call faith. It's a belief in something that we cannot see or feel. 
I said, so you believe in something you cannot see or feel. You believe in something you cannot sense. So you're totally going on an assumption based on nothing. <laughs> He's like, well, when you put it that way, I guess so. I said, why? He couldn't answer my question. He literally could not answer my question as to why he participated with an assumption presumption like that. Needless to say, they never, ever came back. They never came by this house again, ever. <laughs> it was way better than the time uh, many years ago when I was a young man and I answered the door and uh, they wanted to come in and talk. And I said, no, thank you. I'm a Satanist. Man, they literally ran down the driveway, which is not true. Friends and neighbors, I am not a Satanist. I, I am not, I don't hold a belief in anything that I cannot prove. I don't believe in concepts as facts. I don't believe in beliefs as facts. I participate with facts. Now, a good example of a word that is tangible contract that you can't put in your hand would be love. People run into problems with the word love. Is love tangible contract? Well, of course it is. Love is a condition of state. It's a condition of mind, a condition of heart, a condition of consciousness. You feel it for your children. You feel it for your mother, your father. You feel it for your spouse, your siblings. You feel it for your home companions. It's tangible contract. Something like God is not. You can prove love. How can you prove God? And I think what happens with that is that people can't explain something. And when they can't explain something, rather than continue to think about it, rather than to rack their brains and try and come up with a solution, they just say, oh, it was God. It's easier that way. So... That's another story with the Jehovah's Witnesses that was pretty funny. I told the tax story. Let's see, what else? Um, there's another fellow that I know um, that he was helping out some people who were having their house foreclosed upon. And actually, David Wynn Miller, Colin David Eiffel Wynn Colin Miller, the founder of Quantum Grammar, um, he was actually personally helping them. And their, their house was about to be sold, about to be put up for auction. And they did a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, claim. And all of a sudden, the bank stopped calling. Nothing happened with the house. This was probably 10 years ago. The people still live in the house. And they haven't paid one cent on the house. They just live there. Now, a lot of these things are hard to pinpoint down exactly why they happened. But the common denominator is correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar was used. It's very interesting and has very curious effects. Myself, I've had... Corporations physically vacate a physical address and premises. I remember I was going back and forth with this one collection agency on behalf of another, of a client. Uh, they were called the National Collections Bureau, I think. And I went back and forth like three or four times, three or four different letters. And in the last one, the postmaster personally came to my house and I met them at the door and they handed me back the envelope and they said, this entity no longer exists. I said, what do you mean it no longer exists? He says, they, they don't, they're not there at that address. I said, I've been communicating with these people for the past six months at this address. You mean they're not there? And the postmaster said, I mean, they don't exist. 
the building is vacant and there is no National Collections Bureau. There is no forwarding address. They just disappeared off the face of the earth. Now, was that because of what I was doing? I have no idea. I just know that strange stuff happens when you use this stuff. It just does. As you may or may not know, I'm going to be holding a seminar on August 8th at 1400 hours Eastern Standard Now Space. It's filled to capacity. All the seats are filled. Pretty excited about it. It's the first one I've ever done. Hopefully, if it goes well, I'll be doing a couple more, at least two more in the coming months. This particular one is going to be concentrating on creating a correct sentence structure communication on the spot under duress. And then if that one's successful, then I will do the next one on parse. And then the next one I will do on syntax. <clears throat> okay, I'll tell another story. Um, one time I was, this is probably two years ago, two years ago, 2019, 20. Yeah, 2020. I was in my office, and when I'm in my office, I can see out the front window. And my son, who was 17 at the time, was mowing the grass. And I'm, I'm in the office working, and I notice that he shuts the mower off. I don't hear the mower. I'm like, okay, maybe he's getting a drink of water or something. And then I notice the mower's been off for like 10 minutes. I'm like, what's going on? So then I look a little closer and I see there, there was a bush in front of them. I could only see my son's legs and feet. And then I saw someone in camouflage pants and combat boots. Right away, I knew what was going on. I jumped up, grabbed my ship's papers, grabbed my sea pass sea treaty. I went out the door. I walked right up to them, and it was, it was a young gentleman, probably about six foot four, and I'm about six foot. I said, how you doing today, or something like that, and he turned around, and he's like, fine, I'm staff sergeant, blah, 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 he started talking. I wasn't even thinking, friends and neighbors. I grabbed him by his elbow. And directed him off of the property, out into the street, walking towards his car. And as I'm walking him to his car, I begin telling him, you did not have permission to talk to my son. My son is under 18. You are trespassing. As I'm talking, saying this to him, I have a hold of his elbow with this hand. I open his car door with the other and he gets in the car. I put him in the car. I'm not kidding. And as I put him in the car, I reach and I grab my CPAS C treaty and I hand it to him. I said, I don't mean any disrespect, sir. This is my credentials. These are my credentials. This is who I am. I'm Colin Jason F. and Matthew Colin Glass. This is my CPAS C treaty. If you look on the back of that CPAS, you will see the terms and conditions of contracting with me. You are not to speak to that young man. He is not 18 years old. He is a live life claimant. You do not have permission to speak with him. If you want to speak with him, you call me. And my number is, and I gave him my phone number. I said, you can call me and talk to me. But you're not going to talk to him. And you're not going to come here again. Because the next time you do, I'm not going to be so nice. And uh, I said... Do you have any credentials or anything you'd like to say to me? And he's like, no, no, clear as a bell, sir. Clear as a bell. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. And he left. These things happen.
strange things happen with correct sentence structure. And again, you know, that that's like, um, it can also, we can also use the analogy of martial arts or boxing or jujitsu, Muay Thai, kickboxing, whatever it is. Um, you can have two people who are coming together to fight and they're equally matched. Same size, same weight, same years of experience, same age. But one may have more heart than the other. And that's who's going to win. Not everybody has it in them to do this. Not everyone has that inner intestinal fortitude to do this. It doesn't magically appear if you don't have it. Don't get me wrong, you do have to cultivate it. You have to train with it. You have to use it every day. Practice it over and over again so that when it's time to perform, you will perform. And these things will just come out of you. If you don't practice it, it's not going to magically appear. It's like these people that um, think that they know how to fight. They think that even though they don't train, they don't practice, they think that at 11 o'clock at night in the Kroger parking lot, if they're being attacked, that magically they're going to know how to fight all of a sudden out of nowhere. It's not how it works, folks. You got to practice. You got to learn. You got to have the tools in the tool belt. Keep the tool belt uh, in ship and tip top shape and keep the tools sharp. You have to. Because if you don't, there's no use. I'm going to look at what's going on. There's some stuff going on here at the top of my screen. This says that I have 301 total views. That's crazy. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. Thank you for the views. Whoever you are, viewers out there. Hope you've enjoyed these stories. I got a million of them. I used to be of the mind where I didn't really like to share stories like this because I don't want to sensationalize it. I want people to come to the grammar just because they want to learn the grammar, not because they heard a story. But some of my viewers over on YouTube have convinced me to, to tell some stories over here. Because they feel it will get people more interested in it when they hear stories. But I, I know that people are more attracted to personalities than anything. Um, you know, my personality may be one that's kind of boring and whatever, which I can, I can see that. It's not going to hurt my feelings. My main function is grammar tutor. I teach correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar to hundreds of people all over the earth. By the way, I keep meticulous records. From the time I started teaching in February of 2018, I have a list, a whole file of names of every single individual I've ever spoken with, ever had a consultation with, ever had a workshop with, and I have notes next to those names, next to those workshops, next to those consultations, giving observations as to the personality of that individual, what their knowledge level is, what I think of them, how they acted. All those things are in my notes, going back to February of 2018. So if I've spoken with you, you're in that ledger. Literally hundreds of people. If you're interested in a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar workshop, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Let me see if I can... Can I comment? I don't know if I can comment on here. Oh, here we go. I'm going to pop my email address in there.
There's my email address. I've pinned it. Wait, why can't you pin it? Couldn't pin the comment. Okay, I guess I can't pin that comment. Well, not no one's commenting, so it doesn't matter anyways. Out of the out of the 301 viewers, no one is commenting, so it doesn't matter anyways. Here's the thing. When you email me, please include your full correct name. It blows my mind that people will communicate, but they will not use their name. Are they afraid to use their name? Because if you're afraid to authorize your communication, you're, if you're afraid to be the authority of your communication, because authority comes at the end. You write what you write, and then you sign your name. You autograph your name. You place your full correct name at the end so that I know that you're willing to take accountability for yourself and for everything you say, that you're a stand-up individual. I get people emailing me, hey, Jason, can you help me learn this grammar? Thanks. And then they don't put their name. So then I have to write them back and say, please share your correct name. I mean, it's like kindergarten out here sometimes. But I forget, you know, that's just the way this generation is, or a lot of the generation is. It's my experience that they have, they're at a disadvantage as far as reading and writing goes. They don't like to credential themselves. They like to use nom de guerres, you know, like username handles, like, like this channel that I'm on right now is called Cosmosity. And I chose to that name because it's supposed to be a channel of learning. But I definitely credential myself here. And I credential myself in the bio. It's Colin Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass. I have no problem with that. So that's what I say. If you know, I know. You know my full correct name. I just ask the same consideration of you if you email me. Please include your full correct name. Thank you very much for the like, lowly servant. That's an interesting username, lowly servant. If we were going to syntax that, lowly would be an adverb and servant would be a dangling participle verb. And what's the reason for that? The reason is that lowly is non-tangible contract because lowly has the suffix ly, which is a poison suffix. It's the only suffix that negates the tangibility of a word because normally the word low would be tangible, but when you put the ly on it, it deadens the tangibility of the word, thus making it non-tangible, thus making it an adverb. And verbs cannot exist in the fiction unless they are preceded by an adverb. So servant is a dangling participle verb. Why is servant a dangling participle verb? Well, number one, because it comes at the end of the sentence. And number two, what is a verb? A verb is thinking. A verb is motion. But as you can see, servant comes at the end. So there's nothing left to think about. And there's nowhere left to go. So it's just dangling there. Hence, dangling participle verb. And also, servant is tangible contract. But thank you for the like. I appreciate it. Oh, wow. Does this live stream have 119 likes? Are you kidding me? Wow, that's crazy. This TikTok stuff, I mean... I've been on it for months, but I still have no idea really how to use it. I really don't. I'm just kind of fumbling my way around here. By the way, anybody out there, if you want to re-watch this live stream, you have to go to my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. You can find the link to that in my bio. And I put all of my live streams, my TikTok live streams over there. I've actually been watching you for a while. 
I found you looking for the claim of life maybe a year. Some comments were filtered. Why? Why were comments filtered? Hold up. We need to we need to stop that right now. I don't want to filter comments. Okay, I turn that off. I don't want to miss any comments. No matter what they are, I don't want to miss them. <clears throat> no, actually, I don't think... Uh, oh! There it is. I approved it. There we go. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. I've never had a problem mentioning Claim of the Live Life on here. They've never given me any shit for that. Oh, pardon my language. It's my experience that TikTok is actually way more lenient than other platforms. And again, friends and neighbors, keep this in mind. TikTok is a platform. I don't own it. You don't own it. It's just like it's a it's a house, it's a vessel that they invite people to come and use. But again, the users are not the owners. The users must comply with the terms and conditions of the owners. So TikTok has certain terms and conditions. If you're not aware of them, which you should be, if you're going to agree to use it, you should be aware of the terms and conditions. But if you're not aware of them and you violate them and you get banned or deleted or, or whatever, it's not TikTok's fault. It's your fault because TikTok is not your venue. If you want a venue where you can say whatever you want to say, then it's up to you to create it, which some people have done, like with Rumble and Steam it and things like that. But we're all just users here. We're in usury of this platform. And I'm well aware of that. I don't own it. So therefore, I don't get angry or upset if, if things get censored. It's just, oops, my bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> Still, again, thank you, uh, Lowly Servant, for the viewership. Does everybody out there in TikTok land, do you know what a claim of the live life is? Well, more specifically, a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar claim of the live life. You have to have correct grammar on the claim of the live life in order to, for it to even begin to approach correctness. And if you don't have closure on the grammar, then how are you going to know if the grammar on your live life claim is correct? You see the dichotomy here? That's why it's always best to put the grammar first and learn the grammar first. First thing. That's step one. Learn the grammar. Get a foundation. In order to build anything, you have to have a foundation. And in this, the foundation is grammar. You have to learn the grammar. You have to learn it so well that you can explain it to another individual. So that's the first thing, the grammar. You have to have correct grammar on your correct claim of the live life. The next thing is you have to have three live life claim witnesses. Because that's what it is. It's three live life claim witnesses coming together to certify and authorize that you are who you say you are. That is what a correct, those are the basic elements of a correct live life claim. And then you would have other facts on there as well, such as the location where you were physically birthed into this domain. You would also have your mother on there, if, if you can. Your mother is a fact. Your mother gave birth to you. Father, not so much because father's just a donor. Um, your gender. You, you would put your gender on there to credential your gender. And yes, friends and neighbors, listen, this may be a shock to some of you. Look at my fingers. There are two genders. Two. Two genders. 
So you would put one of those on the Live Life claim. And there are other mechanics. There are banking mechanics, postal mechanics, flag mechanics that go under the 1 by 1.9 grammar flag. Has to be a correct ratio. You have to have the correct uh, number value of the stamp, which just means you have to have a whole number value of stamp, not a fractional value. There are other mechanics that go on the back of it. Send it to yourself, registered mail and all that stuff. Post your roads. Get your C lane. All fun stuff. I highly recommend learning the grammar first, though, before you get into all that stuff. Like, the interesting thing is, you don't have to know the grammar to have a claim of the live life, but you have to have a claim of the live life in order to be successful in using the grammar. How would one get with you to learn? This might be a sign to educate myself. Well, as I mentioned earlier, you can email me. If you go to my bio, you will find my email address listed in the bio. Email me. And I would appreciate it if you credential yourself, lowly servant. Please use your full correct name. You know my full correct name. I just asked the same consideration of you. Send me a confidential email. Say, hey, you know, I'd like to apply for a workshop. Because I've been teaching this for almost six years now to hundreds of people all over the earth. I perform one hour, one on one grammar workshops to those who qualify. I will put my email address in here again so that you can see it. There you go. That is my email address. So what would happen is you would email me. You would use your full correct name so I know who you are. I in turn will schedule a 10 to 15 minute video consultation with you. Uh, because you are a guest aboard my vessel, I would present those terms and conditions. And if you want to board my vessel, you would, of course, agree to them or not and not board. But I use Zoom exclusively. I pay for Zoom. I've been using it for five years now. So that's the platform I use. I would set up a 10 to 15 minute Zoom consultation. Please make sure your video is working and your audio is working. And then you and I would talk face to face. You can ask me whatever you want to ask me. And then I will do the same with you. And we'll see if this is something that's uh, a fit for you. If, we'll see if it's something you're committed to do. And I'll give you all the details there in the confidential. And also, lowly servant, it would also be a great help if uh, when you email me and you use your correct name, please say, hey, this is lowly servant from TikTok. So I know who you are. Um, because... You know, I'm getting older, man, you know, <laughs> I'm getting up there in years and my memory's not so great. Even though I write everything down, I keep meticulous records. I do get a lot of emails. So please let me know who you are. Don't just assume that I'm going to know who you are when you email me. And I thank you for your consideration. It may be happy to hear you say this. You said this in your videos and I first found you as well. Thank you for being you. God bless Yes, thank you very much. Blessings to you as well. I appreciate your viewership. Much gratitude for the like. That's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm here for the real ones. The ones that really want to learn this. I'm not here for the dilettantes. For the dabblers. Although they're cool too. Because I'm sure the majority of the subscribers are dilettantes and dabblers. They're not serious about this. But I know that there's going to be one or two serious students that are going to come out of sort of the cream of the crop. And those are the ones that I'm hoping to catch here. And by catch, I mean catch the eye of, get the interest of.
Let's see what we going on there. Okay. Wow. I still can't believe I got that many views. That's just amazing, and I'm extremely grateful for that. 266 likes. Are you freaking kidding me? This is blowing my mind. That's awesome. That makes me pretty happy. Quite frankly, you know, I was about to give up on this TikTok stuff. But after seeing these views and seeing these likes and speaking with uh, a lowly servant here, it's inspired me to continue this. So thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you appreciated these stories. I also gave a grammar lesson when I syntaxed the adverb verb lowly servant. Uh, lowly servant, you must be on an iPhone because I can't see your emoji. Who's this? This is really interesting. Stop me in my tracks. If I could give one piece of advice to you new learners out there. Learning correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is like walking up a down escalator. If you're doing anything except for moving forward, you're going backwards. If you're walking up the down escalator and you stop and you stand still, you're going down. If you're doing anything except for putting one foot in front of the other, you're backsliding. I think people just don't realize the value you're offering. Hmm. As an opinion, I'd have to agree that, that that's probably true. What is the value of being a steward of your grammar? I think it's just really unknown to people. It's kind of alien to them. I mean, you, you get you get people like you get um, very dramatic characters such as Russell J. Gould who make fantastical claims that can't possibly be certified, who get very boisterous and almost perform like what I would call a WWE wrestling promo. And that attracts a lot of people. That's sort of like the low-hanging fruit, though. For me, I try and keep the focus on the grammar, and simply because of that, my view counts are lower because I'm not so dramatic. I'm kind of boring in comparison to people like him. But I'm not here to entertain. My main purpose and function is to be here for those that realize the value of this grammar and want to learn it. That's the main purpose. Where do claims come from? Do they come from your knowledge? Well, where does knowledge come from? For this claimant's cognition of the sensation is with this correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claim of the facts with the knowledge by this claimant, period. What I just told you is that my knowledge comes from my cognition of my sensation. 
Why do you think the word sense and the word sensation cannot be found in any Black's Law Dictionary? The reason being is that senses and sensation, i.e. first-hand knowledge, cannot be argued. And the legal system is all about argument. Who wins the argument? It's not about facts. Thank you very much, friends and neighbors. Thank you, lowly servant, for your contributions and your participation in the comments field. Much love to everybody out there. And lowly servant, please remember to include your correct name when you, if and when you email me. JasonMatthewG17 at gmail.com. And I'll get back to you and we'll set up the 10 to 15 minute video consult. And we'll see if we can get this rolling and get you into some workshops and get you in the thick of it, man. Or woman. I, I don't know. Uh, thank you, even for this interaction. You inspired me more. I definitely will. Awesome. Peace, everybody. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, Thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here, you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm hmm.